Welcome. This is the third in a set of presentations on first century Christian leaders. Our discussion looks at how the church transitioned from eyewitnesses to apologists in the first century and in the second century. We look, we've looked at John the disciple uh, who lived as a disciple of 28 to 30, maybe 32 uh, BCE. We looked at John as a leader in Syria from about 33 uh, CE to 66. We looked at Paul's three missionary journeys, which impacted John because he established a church in Ephesus where John becomes a leader. And then we'll look at John's disciples who were branch out. So let's go on to Paul's journeys. If you look at Paul's journey, Paul's journey followed the routes of the great metropolitans and of the Jewish centers. He started with people who would hear the messianic word. He started in Jerusalem. He had gone to Damascus and to Antioch in his early days. As he went forward, he also went, as you could see, to Crete in his first missionary journey, and then across the landscape of Asia Minor uh, and into Macedonia as he took off from Troas, and there to Corinth and other places. These followed the Jewish settlements, the other Jewish settlements in Rome is where Paul was eventually headed. So let's look at those journeys. If you look at Paul's first missionary journey, it starts out at Antioch, it goes to Cyprus, it touches on places in uh, Asia Minor or Turkey, in Ionium, Lystra, Perga, and then falls back to Antioch. And so that journey. Uh, was followed by a second journey where you had a problem between Paul and Barnabas and they split. And Paul and Sinus went over land while Barnabas continued back to Cyprus. And he went to Tarsus, Ionium, Antioch, and then finally to Troas after wandering around and listening for what the Spirit wanted them to do. And then he went to um, Neapolis, Philippi, uh, Amphoras, Apollonia, Thessalonica. After being kicked out of Thessalonica, he goes across this huge marshy entry to Berea and then to Athens and Corinth. And eventually he returns through Ephesus where he meets some of the, the leaders and then going back to Caesarea, Jerusalem to report and back to Antioch. His third journey follows some of the same ways. He goes overland, and here he spends time uh, at Ephesus. He goes from Ephesus uh, to Trohos, up through some of the Greek locations, and then back to Jerusalem. So Paul and Paul's journey to Rome uh, does not hit Ephesus, but Ephesus became, and Melpitas, and, and that area became a key place for Paul's journey. You see these journeys were overland and sea because the sea was much easier. Here you see a clear discussion of the second journey where he stops to go see Ephesus. Ephesus is one of the largest cities. It has uh, a great Jewish population, so it was a good place. In his third and last journey, he goes over land, spends time at uh, Troas, goes to Philippi, where he sent a church, goes to Thessalonica, Berea, uh, and to uh, Corinth, and then travels back through Ephesus. He spent a great deal of time of Ephesus and spent so. When Paul went on, he sent Timothy to Ephesus and Titus to Crete and Dalmatian. Now, if you look at our previous maps, you can see that Crete is over here. He is working the city streets 
and the big major things. They're also along major Roman highways. The major Roman highway is what he follows. And that highway connected to Philippi and Thessalonica, and then actually the Via Ignatia went on to the city and Rome. So Paul's created these things when he finishes uh, uh, before he gets captured to Rome, he sent Timothy to watch over Ephesus and then goes on to um, return to Jerusalem. He doesn't return back. He gets taken to Rome in his last journey. So Timothy's there as a young man. This is a great place for John to pick up and go after Jerusalem begins to fall in 66, it's got Christians, it's got Jewish populations, and it is an excellent place to continue on with the work. He supplements, as I mentioned, Timothy in Ephesus and probably becomes a senior leader as he has been all over the time. So our next presentation will be John, leader in Ephesus, looking at the timeline there beyond his establishment. Now you realize we're at 66 uh, AD. He's probably in his 50s. He's taking care of Mary still. And there's rumors, uh, not facts, but there are uh, writings from early church fathers that Mary died in Ephesus. Well, I will begin that in our next presentation. <laughs> 